Welcome to Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time, Part 73. This boat was built many years ago by the owner who wanted me to rebuild it and make it radio controlled so I could leave it and another one that I rebuilt for him to different members of his family. When he brought this boat to me for repair, he was 93 years of age and I needed to do a sympathetic restoration on this model so that it retained its character. This is a clip from the final episode when I was test running it in the bath that I used to have in the middle of my garden. As you can see from this next clip and throughout the video, it really was in a bit of a state. I don't mind the paint finish and the general age of it, it's okay. In this video I will be showing how I got the engine to run properly, including having to remove the boiler fittings, which were in the worst condition that I've ever seen. Here we go then, a quick trailer for a model steamboat named Edith. This is an old fishing boat. It's an old model of an old fishing boat. It's quite ramshackle in places. Parts of it are very well made and other parts of it are not so good. And it's been modified over the years. It will have started off its life as a pond launch. By the look of it, someone's had a go in the past at fitting radio control to the rudder. There's a linkage at the stern. Time to look inside, and I wonder what I'm going to find. And what have we here? A petrol or paraffin burner. This is no good at all, so that will go in the scrap bin. And what's in this part? There's a chimney adapter pipe which needs a bit of surgery. It's soft soldered and it's falling apart. And there's a boiler, and there's a twin cylinder steam engine. The boiler is not looking too good though. This is the water gauge. And it almost reminds me of something that you would see on a shipwreck. Anyway, continuing on. From what I can see of this steam engine at the moment, it looks to be very well made, but I will have to remove it to get a final analysis. The propeller seems to rotate freely, but unfortunately it locks at one part of its travel. After a while of messing about with very small screws that were quite tight in the wooden beams that hold the engine, I can withdraw the engine from the steamboat. This steam engine looks to me to be a Reeves Warrior type, and the engine also has a crankshaft driven water pump on the same bed plate. Here's the void from whence the engine came, and as you can see the propeller shaft rotates OK. Unfortunately, at the other end of the boat there is this thing. This is the boiler, and I'm always very sceptical when I look at these old boilers. If you don't know the history of a boiler and how much abuse it's had, the best thing to do with the boiler is to discard it and fit a replacement. It's just not worth taking any chances where pressure vessels are concerned. The most important part of this boat is the engine. This one to me looks to be good, but I can't tell until I run it. And obviously it's not been run for a long, long time, so I'm flooding it with machine oil. I will be using some of my other special oil, but I need to use very thin oil first to make sure it penetrates down into the bearings particularly if they are dry or gummed up with residue. I don't know whether it's going to run or not. I just hope it does. I'm putting some oil into the pipe to make sure that the cylinders are lubricated. It would be very foolish to run the engine without any lubrication in the cylinders. Time to connect the airline and put some air pressure into it. For this first test run I'm making sure that every moving part has got some lubrication and it really is running well. I'm not putting too much pressure into the engine. There's only about 15 to 20 PSI going in there, but it's quite powerful and it's timed well. I can't fault it in any way. I'm not over revving the engine because I'm not sure what's happening inside it in the valve chest and the cylinders. I did pump some oil into the airline. So really what should be coming out of the exhaust pipe apart from compressed air should be oil. So I'm going to put some more oil in and see what happens. And with this increase in oil in the steam line, the engine is starting to labour a little bit. I know what's happening here. I've seen it before and I have the solution. First of all I disconnected the air line, then I took the engine into the outer part of the workshop, sat it on the vise and heated up the cylinders with my blowtorch. And by heated up the cylinders, I don't mean I cremated the cylinders, I just warmed them up to about the same temperature they would be if it was running on steam. Then I put it back on the bench and whilst it was still warm, reconnected the airline. 
and immediately the engine bursts into life and runs a lot better. So what was the problem? Well, the cylinders were just very gummed up and the oil wasn't getting through. And instead of it being lubricating oil, it just became a sticky gum with the residue that was already in there. So by heating up the cylinders, everything starts to dissolve, the oil gets through, and now when I put my finger over the end of the exhaust pipe, it gets very oily very quickly. So a quick summary of the engine. It self-starts in any position, runs like a sewing machine, and is one of the nicest engines I've seen for quite a while. Which is more than I can say for the boiler. And look, it's still got water in it. I thought it was feeling a bit heavy. I wonder how old this water is. It's been in there for quite a long time. Anyway, the first thing to do is to see whether I can resurrect the water gauge, and it's very unlikely. And this is what is known as desinkification. I put hardly any pressure on the fitting at all, but it just snapped off. And the top one's the same, although it's broken off in a different place. The brass has got really brittle. The best material for fittings has always been phosphor bronze, but most of the time, the brass. And to be fair, I'm not being too scathing. They last about 50 years, so really, what's the point in making them very expensive out of phosphor bronze when brass does the job for quite a long time? I'll just take the rest of this out, just because I want to see what it's like. The pressure gauge checks out perfectly. It's a Bassett Loke pressure gauge. Bassett Loke made really good quality equipment in the day. And this pressure gauge is perfectly fine to be used on another boiler. I'm just removing the clack valve. And look at this, the boiler's almost full of water. So what conclusion do I come to with this boat? It's old. It's not quite as neat as the first one I worked on. But in my opinion, the model really captures the essence of an old steam-powered fishing boat. So what about the complexity of the rebuild? The boat is very old and it has some structural issues, which all can be put right by using modern materials. The ballasting of this boat is a problem. There's an enormous amount of ballast inside it and this puts a lot of strain on the hull. What I propose is to create a water tank in the entire bow area of the boat and that would be the ballast. And then the water can be pumped via the engine's water pump into the boiler and this would allow for much longer sailing times on the water. All of the clips that you've been watching have been edited from a video series that I made a while ago. The series is called A Model Steamboat Named Edith, and it's well worth a watch, it's extremely detailed. A lot of the jobs in this video took a while to complete because the hull is made from metal. Lots of pieces of cut-up tin cans soldered together. That is it for this episode of Top Tip Time. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.